with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And my guy, Bida, is back again. My name again. is Bida. I'm here. Bida TM. Yes. He's trademarked. All right. And he is definitely a, an acclaimed journalist. To say that. You went to school for this. Some will say yes. Yes. Yes, I would say that. <laughs> well, we have a great show for you today. We have Kim Carter joining us today. She is the founder of Time for Change Foundation. They also did a movie about her that Taraji P. Henson directed. Nice. And Jennifer Hudson played her in the movie. So that's a huge deal. But she has a book called Waking Up to My Purpose. She has a gala that's happening. She has a center that she actually built mm. in California that is going to help a lot of people with job training and having a space to go and, and you know get the things that they need because she's formerly incarcerated. Oh. So the need for women and children to go from being unhoused to having housing to making sure that they can become self-sufficient. That's really what her mission is and she's been doing the work. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so shout out to my girl Kim Carter. So she'll be joining us today. But in the meantime, let us uh, shine a light. There's been so much going on these past couple of days. So mm -hmm. we got a lot to talk about with my guy B. Dot. But call us up and let us know who you want to shine a light on. 800-292-5150 is the number. Call us up and let's shine a light. It's way up. You gonna light the block up. I'm, I'm a shine. I'm, I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my guy B-Dot is here, and it's time my to shine a light. Now, B-Dot, there's somebody that we both know and love mm -hmm. who you want to shine a light on. I want to shine a light on Sonye. Sonye mm -hmm. Elise. Yes. Singer out of New Jersey, man. She has a new album out called Out the Blue, and over the weekend at the Grammys, she got Celine Dion to sing again. Yeah, that actually went viral, her and Celine Dion singing. Here's what it sounded like. Well, shout out to our girl Sonia. She's also a great writer, super talented. She's mm -hmm. been at this for a long time. And she's she worked with a lot of people like yeah. Anderson Pack and a lot of other people in the mid in the business. So shout out to Sonia, man. All right, well, let's see who you guys want to shine a light on. 800-292-5150 is a number. Gas, who do you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light on myself. It's Black History Month, and I'm a black king. Okay. I'm a father of five, a husband. I done left the street life alone a few years back. I'm on a positive route doing positive things. I ain't in no trouble. I'm in college, 39, but I just decided to go to college. I'm in yeah. school for screenwriting. All 4.0 GPA. I just want to shine a light on myself, man, because I'm, I'm proud of what I'm doing. And we don't always need somebody else to shine a light on. Sometimes we got to just look in the mirror and say, hey, you that person, you that woman, or you that king, you know what I mean? Or you that queen. So well, you that king. Myself. All right. Shout out to you. Amen. Five children. What a role model you are now. And in school, you know, so and screenwriting. I took screenwriting when I was in college. Oh, see, now you really got me inspired. See, now now we all the way right now. See, I appreciate that. I, I didn't know that. And that's B, that's right. an award-winning journalist. <laughs> yes, I am. See, I'm on. Y'all the right people. Pretty soon, I'm going to be at the round table with y'all. We're going to be doing lunch together. Yeah, man. Your life is a movie. Five kids, back in college. Mm -hmm. Left the streets Five alone. Five kids, man. From the Bay Area, you moved to Atlanta, started over. Caught a little small little case. Beat it, beat it yeah. for the most part. I got probation, but I mean, got out the streets, and I'm doing all positive things, all legal money. Legal money. I'm blessed. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling. Shine a light on you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was Shine a Light. And we got Yeetie when we come back. When we come back, beat out. Let's talk about Drewski. Let's talk about it. He's got a new reality show, and we'll tell you guys about it. I felt like this was going to happen at some point. It's a natural progression. It's a natural progression. It's way up. Way up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and B Dot is here. Yes, I am. And let's do some Yee Tea. You don't mind doing a little gossip with me, right? Why not? Okay, well, let's get into Drew Ski. So he has a new reality show coming, and it's inspired by his Could Have Been Records. He was on Undisputed, and here's what he had to say about this new show. It's going to be on YouTube. So the first season will be on YouTube. We pretty much did this with our own money and like put all the contestants from Could Have Been Records, the label, in one house competing for $50,000. So, okay. you know, we're giving out opportunity, brother. But yes. we ain't just giving it. You got to earn it. 
Could have been records is funny. Could have been. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Birdman and Drewski, when they was going back and forth, was that fake or was that real? These days, I can't tell the difference, Ange. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I'll be um, interested to watch watch this. I wonder who's going to get signed to Could Have Been Records. Mm -hmm. And they're giving out deals and money? Yeah. His reactions are what's really hilarious. And he does seem like a music exec. Right. And speaking of music execs, let's talk about Warner Music. They're cutting 600 jobs, which is 10% of their staff. And they're saying that's going to save about $200 million in costs. Mm. Um, and that money is going to go back into the company. This affected you personally. Yes, it did. <laughs> it what ruined happened? my day. You know, the Rap Radar podcast is on uh, Interval Presents, which is their podcast arm. So... After I left here, I read that news. I was like, oh, man, I need to go to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's over for for their podcast network. It or? seems like it. Yeah. OK. Well, everybody listening, that means Rap Radar podcast is ready to negotiate. Yes, we are. And that's why I'm here. I'm doing my internship with Way Up and Angela. All right. Well, we need some coffee. Um, <laughs> now, right Taylor back. Swift is selling her private plane. She was having some issues. And that's because there was uh, somebody that kept on basically showing where her plane was going this person that tracks celebrity flights um has this college student jack sweeney hmm. and so her legal team intervened they sent him a cease and desist letter they said he was stalking and harassing he said that he thinks this is public information yeah. and transparency and that's the motivation he said i think people are interested you should have a decent expectation that your jet will be tracked whether or not i do it as after all it is public information and he doesn't intend to harm anybody so now she's parting ways with that private jet because mm. she doesn't want people to track it yeah. rich people problems <laughs> rich people problems. i really want to like relate to it but i don't understand much about what that feels like <laughs> yeah i saw someone following me on the c train so Ooh, you got to stop <laughs> posting when you're on the train. Right. Um, now, Beyonce has launched her hair care line, Sacred. And so people are really excited for this. It actually is going to be out February 20th. Mm. As she wrote on social media, here is Sacred. The journey begins February 20th. Visit Sacred.com. I assume it's Sacred, C-E. Because yeah, it's like and Beyonce. It has a, the fancy thing on top of the E. The accent. The accent. Yeah, we call it an accent. Sacred. Yeah, so let's get rid... Oh, say that again? Sacred. Because let's not forget... B-Dot's name is Brian Miller, but it's really Brian Millar. Easy. <laughs> it's very important to pronounce that right. Patrick Weaves, ladies. All right. Well, that is your Yee Tea. And when we come back, we have About Last Night. And when I tell you I am still exhausted from being outside last night, I'll tell you what I did. B-Dot will tell you what he did. He was drinking at home in bed. It's way up. <laughs> yeah. Last night. So, About Last Night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and B Dot is here. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. And it's time for About Last Night. That's where we discuss what we did last night. Um, so last night, I was actually at the Virgin Hotel oh. with my friend Ingrid. She has her wine that she launched, I Best Wines. Mm -hmm. It's made in South Africa. And that is my girl. Yes. And so I'm actually um, her strategic advisor. Check you out, Ange. For her wine. But I love the fact that um, they're, they're actually serving it. At the Virgin Hotel. So they had an event for people to come, taste it. The wine is amazing. She has red and white wine. You always see it in the background. Yep. In the shots, the I Best Wines. Um, and I'm just really happy and proud of her for stepping out and deciding that she wanted to do something on her own, mm -hmm. spending all her own money. Because really, like a lot of times when you're trying to develop something like this, we don't have the capital and right. we haven't raised funds. And so now she's in the process of raising funds. But she's already done a lot. You and, know, And it's black owned. Yeah, and it's black owned. And she really, it's not a white label, which means that she really went to South Africa, lived there for a period of time wow. to develop this wine. And it was a long process. And I watched her do it from everything from the actual liquid to the bottle design, everything from the mm -hmm. logo. Like there were so many text messages where she's sending me different things. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And so just me seeing that process, she didn't just slap a, a label on something <laughs> that is already made. Yeah. You know, she actually went and made this, tasted it, developed did make sure it was right and it was not an easy process and not a cheap one so i'm just happy to see the success that she's been having and how many people have been uh supporting her mm -hmm. when i was at the brooklyn museum the other night for the swiss beats and alicia keys giants the event that they had for their display yeah. at the museum it was her wine that they were serving oh wow that's what's up at the brooklyn museum and for 
uh, the movie that just came out, the James Samuel movie. Yeah, Book of Clarence. The Book of Clarence, yes. They actually, when they sent out the gift packages, her wine was part of the wow. gift packages that they sent out for Book of Clarence. So shout out to my girl, Ingrid, putting in the work for a long time. She actually worked for a lot of other brands, so I think she had the experience to launch her own. And so people always talk about ownership, and a lot of times when you're working someplace, you should be thinking, how can I take these skills to do something for myself? Mm. Absolutely. I best wine. I best wine. Yes. That's awesome. Can I'm going to get you a bottle. Yeah, please. Because you used to get me drunk in the mornings when we did radio in the past. Remember okay. those days? Early in the morning. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have a drink today. And also after that, my real estate attorney had a party. He does an annual event. God damn, man. You was outside I for know. real. I was like trying to do everything in one day. And so I went to his event and stayed out way too long. If you look at my stories, you can see Jasmine was with me also. Okay. All it takes is a little bit for Jasmine <laughs> to get a little... Uh, Let's just say want to stay out all night. Okay. And so we did that. Shout out to my guy, Serge, though. That is my real estate attorney. We're actually partnering on opening a new coffee shop. Oh, man. That's going to be in Brooklyn. So he's not just my attorney, but he's also somebody that I really uh, trust and rely on. And Taj Gibson was there last night. He works with mm -hmm. him, too. So he's got a lot of different ventures going on. So shout out to everybody also in real estate because he's a real estate attorney and I am a realtor. You did all this on a school night? All of it. And now I'm here. Oh, my goodness. And wait till you hear what I'm doing after this. <laughs> but that's about last night. I know you didn't do nothing. Of course not. I was home eating leftovers watching Netflix. Okay. Netflix and chill. Netflix by myself. Okay. So you was drinking <laughs> in the mirror. All right. That video will leak soon. It will. Well, that's about last night. And when we come back, I want to talk about when we go out. A waitress was telling me I was sitting down eating and uh, she gave me a compliment and the guy I was with was like, oh, you're not going to say you like my hair too? And she was like, I never compliment a man. Wow. If uh, he's out with a woman, I would never do that. It's disrespectful. And I want to see what you guys think. Has that happened to you? Have you been on a date and the person serving you paid a compliment to your date and you got a little upset or did you think it was no big deal? Be that. I know it's happened to you. 800-292-5150. Call us up. Let us know. We want to hear about it. I've been way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. Yes, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my co-host today, B-Dot, is here. Hi, it's B-Dot. <laughs> <laughs> and B-Dot, we are talking about whether or not it's disrespectful if the waitress compliments you. Like, say we were out, right? and the waitress came over and was like, oh my gosh, you're so handsome. Mm. I love your waves. Would that be rude to me? <laughs> no, she's not blind. Oh my gosh. What? Now, let's just say we were out, but the waiter comes over and says, oh wow, you're so beautiful, Angela. Like... This is so nice to see you in person. Would that be rude to you? Well, is he heterosexual or homosexual? Because it happens all the time. I mean, you know, just is it rude? No, I think it's about how you say things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That makes things a little bit better. All right, but it's happened to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's happened to me. Like, I've been out and um, people might say, hey, you look nice. Or I'm with a woman and she's like, oh, why are you taking my compliment away from me? I'm like, yo, I didn't know who, who the but person was talking to. But you don't get jealous. To. No, absolutely not. All right, but let's see what you guys think. 800-292-5150. Des, is it disrespectful if the waitress compliments you while you're on a date? I mean, I came out to look good, so, you know. <laughs> you think it would be rude, though, if you're, you know, if you're with a lady and, and the waitress is like, okay, you look good. I mean, she could still compliment the table, but, you know, but I take my compliment. Yeah, man. Now, what if it was a, um, a man complimenting her? Would that be okay? Ooh, double standard, right? <laughs> so, no, that's not okay. No, not really. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dad, you can't be serious. So, she can compliment, a woman could compliment you, but a man can't compliment her. Just say something like, not too um, indescriptive. And what if he's like, yeah, they're sitting right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we need a new way. <laughs> <laughs> You just got to let it happen. You might spin in your food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for calling, no. Mr. Double Standard Des. <laughs> Double Standard Des. Thanks, thanks. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Hey, it's so me. Recently, it's me and B-Dot. We want to hear what happened. I know you had an issue with the waiter. Oh, uh, What's up, B-Dot? I just thanks for calling. I woke up this morning and chose violent. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at this restaurant in Palm Beach called Buchan like two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this waiter... I was with my girl. She was like, she told me that my shirt was dapper and it made my features look more handsome, mm. which, you know, that was inappropriate. Ooh, that's very <laughs> descriptive. So what happened? I mean, my girl, she didn't really like act out. Like, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. she, we did switch a waiter for sure. Oh, you switched waiters. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, I, 
I did that because I didn't want to, like, on the ride home, like, oh, you really let her tell you you look like that? Or, like, you know how I could be. Right, yeah. so it was, it was showing respect to your lady, like, oh, yeah, that was inappropriate, felt inappropriate. But also, I ain't gonna lie, either. Lately, I've been at the gym working out, too. Oh, my goodness. Girl, they've been complimenting me, too, so I ain't been saying that, you know. Hey, you, thank you, too, because I still have got that Valentino cologne from you. I love you. Oh, well, thank you. By the way, you look very dapper. <laughs> You I know can tell you've been working out. You know his show, he left hey, a, one star on Yelp after that. <laughs> yes? Hey, the restaurant, if y'all ever go to Palm Beach, view Kenneth up. It's a five-star restaurant. The best food ever. Also, if Dan need an assistant, I'm moving there in August. Hey, Dan, I, let me be your assistant. Oh, Dan left the room. <laughs> I'll let him know since you've been working out. Right, I woke up this morning and chose violence. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, that was you guys weighing in on what you think about whether or not the waiter should be complimenting uh, the person that you're on a date with. Uh, she said the way she's, that I was dealing with said she can only compliment women. Wow. She will never compliment the man. All right. Well, 800-292-5150 in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have your Yeti. We'll be talking about this Monique interview on Club Shay Shay, which is well over 3 million views. All right. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yeti. Come and get the tea. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and B Dot is here with me. My name is B Dot. Getting ready for some Yee Tea. Did you watch the Monique interview on Club Shay Shay? I saw a couple clips. All right, well, let's see where it's at right now. It's at 3.7 million views. Wow. Already. Um, and let's talk about some of the things that went viral. There were a lot of different moments. It's a three hour interview. It's like a motion picture. Well, one person who Monique talked about was D.L. Hughley, and she says that they will never be cool until he takes accountability for the foul things that he said to her, including a game that they play on the radio show. And his co host, my girl Jasmine, mm -hmm. is actually the person who was doing the game because he wasn't there that day. And it was kind of a would you rather type of game. And here's what she says happened Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? I call D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, Hey, baby. Yeah. That's how he responds. I said, listen, ask me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his exact words. Well, that's how we do it. It got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. Well, DL did respond. He went on his social media page with the quickness. Oh. And he said, the reason lies and false narratives continue to go on and circulate is because they go unchecked. Mm. What you're not going to do is call me out my name and not get checked. Monique is a liar. She is constantly throwing the rock and hiding the hand. You don't get to tear people down and then soften the blow by calling them brother, sister, sweet baby. That's not love. And here's what he had to say about her being a liar. My co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she said she got off. She called me. Monique did. And she said I was very dismissive. Like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. All right. Now, in addition, she talked about Kevin Hart. Apparently, they had a really great relationship and then they didn't. She said he was supposed to help her, but then she didn't hear from him for like two years. Here's what she said about Kevin Hart. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good, shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. And we're trying to get our talk thing to do with Monique. I don't know what, what really happened behind the scenes with that, but I'm sure Kevin Hart has his own side to the story, too. Mm. All right. Well, after Monique said this about Kevin Hart, then Michael Blackson came to Kevin Hart's defense. OK, what did he say? Now, he went on um, social media actually this morning and said, I love Monique. She's one of the most talented and hardest working women on the planet. He talked about a meeting and how she came up to him and told him that he was funny and had him come in headline. And he said they've done a lot of things together. She's the best big sister you can have. Mm. He said, as much as I love Monique as a big sister, I think she was wrong for mentioning Kev in her interview. Me and Kev has bumped heads in the past, but wrong is wrong. Monique even said in her interview how Kev invited her to his podcast two years ago when no one was effing with her. He even wrote her a check when she was down. Plus, he even made phone calls to some of the people she had issues with, but that didn't work. Wow. And at some point, Kev's manager got involved, but a manager's job is to keep his client out the BS, and that's what he did. So you can't say Kev didn't try to help you. Monique called Kev a gatekeeper, but then he tried to open the gate for her, and they told that 
mind your business. <laughs> she should have thanked him for trying. So that's what he said in response to Monique. There are two sides to every story. Yeah, this is all Shay. I told you, it's going to be a lot of stories coming out. Like, everybody's going to be responding. Is- so that was interesting because Michael Blackson is also wasn't that fond of Kevin Hart for a period of time. But mm. I think from his perspective, it does make you understand it. Because she did say that at first he was helpful to her and offered her things, but then ghosted her. Right. We need a comedy Royal Rumble, man. This is getting out of hand. This is what it's feeling. We need all these verses. Yes. All right. Uh, when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are flying under the radar, but we definitely feel like you need to know about it. You know, Bita, since you were wearing Chanel yesterday, oh. we have a story about Chanel for you guys. It's all about a lawsuit and fake purses. It's way up. Under the Radar is next. The news. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. What's up? It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my guy Bita is here. I'm still here. You ready for some Under the Radar? Let's do it. All right. Well, according to to data. This was a story that I saw, by the way, on CNN. Black dads are more likely to play, dress, and share a meal with their child than other fathers. They said that narrative that black fathers are more absent or not as involved and not as engaged is uh, definitely not true at all. That's a fact. I'm a black dad, so I definitely had to play dress up. I had to play with the Barbies. Super active. Yeah, so good to know because I do feel like they try to paint this narrative that black fathers you know, aren't doing those things, but they actually are the most involved when they step into that role, even if it's a step-parent role. Right. All right, now, uh, Chanel, uh, there was a lawsuit. They just actually won this lawsuit. They sued back in 2018. What goes around comes around. That is a luxury fashion reseller. You know, there's a lot of resellers. Right. Um, And sometimes, you know, those items end up going for more than they did originally. And so what they're saying is the verdict was for four million dollars for damages and they said that what goes around comes around did they act willfully with reckless disregard or with willful blindness in its use of hashtags because they try to make it seem like there is a blurred line between a real purse and a fake one Mm. but there was something that happened where there was like a breach where they went and chanel has these um codes okay so that you can identify the bag so when you buy a chanel bag you can register it it's like a qr code yeah it's like a a code that you can register it so that you know it's real and Mm -hmm. so something happened where there was a breach where all those numbers managed to get out and then they were selling fake bags like they were real ones Mm. so chanel has said you know the practices of the authenticity is not airtight and fake bags are getting through anyway with those serial numbers some these got thirty thousand serial numbers from a database that Chanel used and they were bringing those bags in and so now they managed to win this lawsuit against what goes around comes around four million dollars four million dollars to get you one Chanel bag four million dollars <laughs> no you saw the prices recently it's not four million dollars okay. they probably start around five thousand <laughs> don't ask me how I know all right well that is your under the radar and don't forget today we got the way up mix happening so let's party 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 it's a Thursday you know we're getting ready for the weekend now Now. and we also have a very special guest coming we have Kim Carter she's the founder of Time for Change Foundation she has a book out called Waking Up to My Purpose and she also has a movie where Jennifer Hudson plays her character Taraji actually directed this and it's all about her time when she was incarcerated and the program that she used to make sure that she didn't end up going back to jail and when you watch it you'll definitely get emotional probably even cry but she'll be joining us today it's way up they say it's truth in the room ah! from industry shade to all the gossip Out, angela's spilling that yee tea what's up it's way up with angela yee i'm angela yee and i'm here with my guy b-dot yes ma'am you ready for some yee tea let's get it All right, Eve has announced her memoir is going to be coming out this fall. Who's that girl? September 17th. She said, it's been a journey down memory lane. I can't wait for y'all to read it. You can pre-order it now via the link in my bio. So exciting. Kathy Andoli is writing it. She's the same one who co-authored Little Kim's book that's mm-hmm. coming out, too, by the way. She also did Prodigies. I love it. Yeah. The Prodigies book was good. It was good. You know, so. Got a lot of people in trouble, though. I, listen, who cares? <laughs> it was. It's a real stories, and yeah. I feel like they're in the past, too. Yeah. But it made people have to, like, Nori had to respond to things that were said about him. Word. You know. So if Kathy's on it, it's going to be a page turner for sure. All right. Well, can't wait. And I will be reading Little Kim's and Eve's. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait. All right. Logic recently 
uploaded his logically speaking interview. It was a one on one discussion where he talked to his dad. His dad is black, by the way. His mom is white. Um, his dad abandoned the family while addicted to crack. He had other children and he sat down with his dad to have a conversation about their relationship. And here's how some of it went. I waited every weekend and you never showed up. You always said that you would. What is it like as a man who used a substance that would allow you to make that little boy wait forever? The things in which, like, I have done in my past have come back to haunt me. Like you say, peace, love, and positivity. But, you know, how can you have peace, love, and positivity if you don't have experience, strength, and hope? Because they both come together. <laughs> Bita, why are you laughing? What is Yo, wrong with you? That reminded me of the best cry ever video on Don't YouTube. Do that. It does. Don't do that. Break that out. was you know how hard it is to have these type of conversations? <laughs> they might have never probably talked about this before. And then you don't know how you're gonna act when you have to have these tough things to talk about. I'm gonna laugh now and cry later, man. Don't do that. I'm sorry. All right. Well, Logic, we applaud you for being brave <laughs> enough to share your story, even when people like B dot. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm being ignorant. Uh, All right, 50 Cent and Lil Wayne are going to be assistant coaches in the NBA All-Star Celebrity Game, so shout out to them. And uh, Shannon Sharp is going to be assisting, oh no, Shannon, he's assisting Shannon Sharp, mm. 50 Cent is, and Lil Wayne is going to be assisting Stephen A. Smith. Okay. That should be a fun watch. This game is going to be Friday, February 16th, and it's going to air exclusively on ESPN. In the meantime, Metro Boomin and 21 Savage are going to face off in an NFL flag football game. That's going to be happening Super Bowl weekend this weekend. Rappers always wanted to be athletes, man. I wonder who's going to win this game. What you got your money on? You know what? I am going to say... We should make a bet, Ange. Ooh. Who's on the, who's on the team? Uh, Metro Boomin's team, Cam Newton's on there. Oh, okay. And then for 21 Savage, Michael Vick. Mmm. All right. So quarterback. I, I think I'm going to go with 21 Savage. All right. All right. Well, then I'll go with Metro Boomin because right. Offset's on the team. Tiana Taylor. Uh, Funny Marco. Funny Marco. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about Funny Marco. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make a bet. We got to make it. Is it a small wager we're going to do? Yeah. Let's. How much you want to bet? $50? I was thinking five. Okay, $5 is All right, fine. Cool. I'm, I'm cash poor right now. <laughs> All right, well, that is your Yee T. And when we come back, we have Ask Yee. 800 292 5150 is a number. Call us up and let us know any question that you have. And beat out, I'm going to need you to be sensitive. All right, I'll try. Because you were very insensitive earlier. But 800 292 5150, we're here to help you out. It's way up. Hey, everybody, exit. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, so you should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and B Dot is here. Yo, yo. B Dot, you ready to give some advice? Yes. For Ask Yee, 800 292 5150. Jesse is on the hey, line. With hey, Jesse. What's your question for us? I have a really good friend. has been my best friend for quite some time now, over five years. And uh, when I had met her, she had a boyfriend who was in prison, mm -hmm. and she kept it, she held it down. Okay. And, you know, we came home. He was uh, still, you know, in the streets. And very controlling. And one day, you know, my best friend called me over because she was fearful of her life, um, mm -mm -mm. that he was going to hurt her. And, of course, as a best friend, as you would and I would, we got to be there on site for our friends, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Had I not been there, he probably would have hurt her. Mm. That's and awful. You I, do not want to see your friend, your best friend go through something like that. But ever since that one incident had occurred, my best friend has been very distant. Probably. He probably wow. doesn't want her talking to you. 100%. I, I reached out and I said, hey, what's going on? Like, when I responded to my calls or my text messages, I noticed you took me off all social media platforms. Wow. I'm already knowing you, but check it. Yo, I'm already knowing what, what it really is. So I'm not even really taking that on her. I just want to hear it come from her mouth. Like, yo, like it's homeboy who don't want me to really fool with you, right? So she hits me back and she confirms. So now wow. this is kind of where I'm torn in between it all. Do I vocally reach out to her and be like, hey, listen, I think this is kind of stupid. It's insane. You know, I need you to remember that he's controlling you X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Or do I, I just kind of just... I don't think that's going to matter at this point. I feel like he's in her head so much mm -hmm. that you even trying to say something negative about him will probably make her be more closed off to you. I would definitely let her know because I think the main thing is you have to let people know that you're there for them, that they can talk to you. You don't want her to feel like I've lost all my friends when this does happen again because it will. Yep. 
You know, and it's hard to force somebody to get out of something if they don't want to do it. All they're going to do is cut you off and not respond to you. I actually had a situation with somebody close to me where she cut off, like, her family members were asking me to talk to her, and I, she just didn't listen to anybody. So all I could do was yeah. let her know that I love her, I support her, whatever decision she makes, you know, I'm with her, even if I don't agree with her being with him. But what did end up happening was he sent out naked pictures of her to everybody, including her boss at work. Damn. And she called me up crying one day because there is going to be a time where she's going to need to have somebody to come to. And unfortunately, you can't force her. All she's going to do is defend him right now. He's got her kind of brainwashed. And I ended up having to take her to the police station to file a restraining order, you know, in that moment. And she hasn't gone back, I'm happy to say. But it was a long journey, like literally years before she got to that point. She ended up having children with him and everything. Mm. And so that's what's really tough is that people are going to make their decisions and justify their decisions. And she is a victim of abuse. And so we don't know what type of things he's putting into her her head and what's going on with her self-esteem. All you can do is be there for her and let her know anything she can tell you. You won't be judging her, but you want to help her and support her in any way possible. I would tell her to. The last thing I want is for me to feel like I didn't at least tell you how I felt and you end up worst case scenario dead because that is the worst case scenario and that could potentially happen no definitely but that that's all you can do okay all right well thank you for calling i wish you luck i know so many people deal right. with that with friendships too yeah it's, especially when you care for somebody and you love them you know it's hard to sit on the sideline and see them get mistreated wrongly or they're constantly being hurt by somebody like it's not the best kind of feeling to sit and watch yeah and you don't want to become her enemy because right. that's what ends up happening all right. Well, Thanks. thank you for calling, and I wish you so much luck. Okay, Jesse. Uh, thank you so much for giving me a call back. Y'all take it easy. All right. Well, eight hundred two nine two fifty one fifty is a number. In case you couldn't get through, uh, that is for Ask You. You can always leave a message. We'll answer your calls mm-hmm. there. And when we come back, we do have Kim Carter joining us. She is the founder of Time for Change Foundation. She also has a book, Waking Up to My Purpose. She was incarcerated, but managed to turn her life around, and she'll tell you all about it. It's way up. We about to do this. Yeah. Yo. More Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. You know who it is. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And this woman sitting next to me is somebody who I aspire to follow in her footsteps. Kim Carter is here with me today. That's right. Uh, but Kim Carter, you have such an extraordinary story. And so I just want for people who maybe have never heard of the Time for Change Foundation or your story, which also, by the way, was told, um, tell it like a woman, Taraji P. Henson directed and Jennifer Hudson played you in this short film, which I feel like is going to turn into a full feature film. But just talk a little bit about your history of who Kim Carter is. Okay, so um, I would just say that I am the little light in the dark that refused to just fade out based on my past experiences of incarceration molestation and all the trauma that went with the Rockefeller drug laws I could have easily you know committed suicide I could have easily succumbed to my condition but that little girl inside of me she wanted to win and even though she had been silenced at five years old because of that molestation she still wanted to way out so when I look at way up I think about the way out where did you grow up I was born here in New York and I grew up between Los Angeles and Inglewood. My mother kidnapped me and taken to uh, California where I succumbed to all the ills of societal oppression. And so at the age of 17, right, is that the first time you tried crack cocaine? Yes, um, I introduced to crack cocaine in the house with my mom and um, I became hooked. And I will be hooked on crack cocaine until I will be rescued by going to jail. Oh my gosh. All right. So the first time you went to jail, how old were you the first time that you ended up? Oh, well, I've been going to jail since like 18, since 19 18? years old. Okay. It's revolving in that between the county jail and the penitentiary. The penitentiary is where things really got real. Mm-hmm. Because then I was surrounded by all types of other criminal activity. Now, remember, I was just smoking a little crack, stealing from the local stores and all that. Right. I wasn't around, you know, people who uh, committed murder. Right now, I'm talking to the founder and ambassador of Time for Change Foundation, Kim Carter. And at some point, you had a daughter. I had a daughter. At 21. I had a daughter at 21. And to the best of my ability, I wanted to raise my daughter. But I couldn't put two and two together. I didn't have no support, no help, or no nothing. And so she was allowed to be raised by her father at that time, who wasn't really her father, but the guy that I was with, his mother and his sisters helped raise her. And then I went to the penitentiary. And then when he got ready to die, he gave it back to my mom. So then my mom had her. 
Mm-hmm. So fortunately for me, she didn't go into like the yeah. System that's a bl- system. That's a blessing that there was a male figure that stepped up to the plate yes. because it wasn't even her biological father. Mm-hmm. Where was he? He just yeah. It was he was unknown. And, you know, today my daughter's what she's an MBA graduate. You know, whoop, whoop. living her best life with my <laughs> with my beautiful grandkids. Shout out to Zayden and Emery. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you repair your relationship with her? What was that like for you? Because like you said, you know, you weren't able to really be there when she exactly. was younger. And I'm well, sure a lot of guilt came with that. Well, it was a lot of guilt. But once I started healing myself and getting therapy, I realized I did the best I could with what I had. I also realized my mom did the best she could with what she mm. had. And I started seeing how the generational curses was passed down and how when you don't have what you need for support, it's just like saying we could sit there and say, oh, there goes Shanique. Well, uh, her kids is all running around. But Shanique working three jobs to put food on the table. Mm-hmm. But if Shanika was to not work, like, oh, she late, she could be working. Like, either way it go, we're not right. supporting. She got three kids. And that's what needs to happen. We're to support for us as a family, as a village. And we got to come back together as a people. So in my particular story, I was blessed in that way. But then I learned I had to create the village that I needed. So when I got clean and sober, I hung around people who was clean and sober. Has it been 30 years? 30, yep. 30, 30 years. years. That is huge. Congratulations. One day at a time. One day at a time. Now, talk to me about when you finally were able to break the cycle so i would say my first time breaking the cycle was the part that is depicted in the movie when i was um going through another one of those cycles of prison and i was offered some therapeutic services so in this program called forever free i was offered some services and i was rebelling i was pushing away i don't want it it's not going to work for me because in my mind i don't feel there's a way out Right. But they started breaking the layers and like an onion is peeling them back and peeling them back and helping me to see I was not what had happened to me. Most important thing, I was not what had happened to mm-hmm. me. And when I was able to separate what had happened to me from me, mm-hmm. I could see me for who I was. All right. Kim Carter is here joining me and we are talking to her about her foundation, Time for Change. Also about the movie that Taraji directed about her, Tell It Like a Woman, where she is played by Jennifer Hudson. But she is a community activist and she's doing so much right now. We want to make sure that you guys know all about it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. More with Kim Carter next. I'm do this. Yeah. Yo. More Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Kim Carter is here. Let's talk about the nonprofit that you have. Because the reason you're in New York, am I allowed to say this? You're yes. the winner of three Anthem Awards. Three times Anthem Awards. Shout out to my publicist. We was nominated and we received the gold in the humanitarian category, business of the year category, and community outreach category. And I will tell you that having the opportunity to come to New York and to share the love of what we do and why we do it and why we've been successful. So since 2002, Time for Change Foundation has supported over 3,500 women from incarceration and homelessness into self-sufficiency. We pride ourselves on saying we don't recycle homelessness, we end it. So I started building my own affordable housing. We found out that women who had children in foster care was having their parental rights severed because they could not access housing. Mm -hmm. So since our inception, we've helped over 317 children from foster care reunite back with their moms. Right now, I'm talking to the founder and ambassador of Time for Change Foundation, Kim Carter. Tell it like a woman. That is uh, Jennifer Hudson is actually Kim Carter in that movie. She plays you. Can you imagine getting a call from Taraji P. Henson? She goes, yeah, well, you know, I read the script and I just love it. You know, I've directed one of the episodes of Empire, but I really like to direct this story. I'm like, okay, okay. (laughs) And I'm like, can somebody believe that? I just got a call from Taraji B. Henson. <laughs> so then we went and had a Zoom. And she gets on the Zoom. And she's just so down to earth and just so real. And she's like, well, who do you want to play you? I was like, whoever. If Cookie can't come up, then whoever right, right. can come, right? <laughs> and then the next time I got on the phone, she said, you're going to like this. I was like, who? And she said, hold on. She's coming on right now. And then here comes Jennifer Hudson swoops in. And I was like, oh, my God. You brought the diva <laughs> to the screen. I, I was up out my seat in my living room at this point. I can't, I can't even. Down. Imagine and Jennifer O M G, she is the sweetest soul. I mean, like on set, some of the trauma she had to relive and where she went to in herself to bring that out 
it was really like right in line with the two authentic feelings that I had of when I went through that trauma. And this woman is so thoughtful that she would come to me. Are you okay? I'm like, uh, are you okay? She goes, yeah, I'm okay. I told them they could start paying me for every one of my tears. <laughs> <laughs> and we would just laugh it off, you know. And so having the movie done, like I always pinch myself, but I go back to this. I don't get to be all high and mighty because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm one hit away without God. And I say that to say... Of course I'm thrilled. Of course I pinch myself that there's a movie about me. I'm watching her play Aretha Franklin and watching her play me. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> you know, when I got that CNN Hero Award, it was 50,000 nominations, eight different countries, and I made it to the top 10. And I'm standing on stage with people who go to war-torn countries and create orphanages. And I'm like, Lord, I never see myself making the impact that I do because I'm so busy doing the work. Right now, I'm talking to the founder and ambassador of Time for Change Foundation, Kim Carter. But you see the women whose lives you have impacted. I saw when you were on Jennifer Hudson's show that uh, one of the women actually came on the show. She's a registered nurse. Yeah, she's a registered yeah. nurse. And now she's actually teaching at the same school to try to kick her out. Her name is Keisha Murphy. Shout out to Keisha. She's doing amazing. And because of Keisha, we actually was able to go to Sacramento and make a law so that that wouldn't happen to no other female being ejected from a school because of a felony conviction after you've already collected the tuition. She was $110,000 in debt Whoa. before they kicked her out of school because of felony conviction that she had 15 years ago. That's wild. We changed the Welfare Reform Act. We changed the Adoption Safe Family Act. We have worked on a lot of stuff with Prop 47, Prop 36, AB 109, like anything to do with prison reform. We're removing some of those oppressive Jim Crow type laws that would oppress people of color. We have been pulling the, pulling the onions back and unlanding and lifting up the voices of those most impacted. Thank you so much for joining me today and congratulations. I know you don't do it at all for the accolades, but they are well deserved. Thank you so much. You know, I just want to be here to help others. Like I say, I want to help you lift mm. up these women. Like that's the cause that I can stand behind all day long. Again, the book is Waking Up to My Purpose. Make sure you watch Tell It Like a Woman so you can actually see some of that story. But Waking Up to My Purpose, you can see the full story. And to all the women that you've helped, you know, I see them in the comments. I see just actual living proof of that. And I think that's important. Uh, the Bebop Center, make sure y'all come out April 19th. If there's any way you can support all okay. that information is there. Yeah, our annual gala is there. And I also have my own website. It's called kimschamp.com. That's K I M S is in Sam, champ like the champion. Dot com and uh, check me out. All right. Thank you so much. If you want to watch that full interview with Kim Carter, you can go to my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. And when we come back, of course, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my guy B Dot was here. Today's your second day co host. Second day, man. I'm getting used to it. I know. You're good at talking, though, and you can check him out on the Rap Radar podcast as well. Absolutely. And he was an MTV VJ. Yeah, man. Do they still have VJs? I don't think so. <laughs> I was like, what are the last <laughs> what, of the Mohican right? kids? Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you guys for calling in today and weighing in on the topic we were talking about. What a waitress told me. She said she never compliments a man mm. uh, when she's waiting on tables. She'll say a compliment to the woman. Yes. but not to the man she feels like it's inappropriate we wanted to see what you guys think about that um, it feels like some of you are okay with it but uh, there's a double standard it's not disrespect it's discrimination Angela I want my <laughs> props too yo you look nice thank you I'll take it uh, I wasn't talking to you oh. alright but anyway <laughs> thank you also to Kim Carter for coming through uh, talked about her time for change foundation she does have a big benefit gala coming up that I'm trying to get out to also but you can watch Tell It Like a Woman mm -hmm. Taraji P. Henson directed that and Jennifer Hudson played her in that movie she also has a book Waking Up to My Purpose just a great amazing story and she's 30 years sober so wow. we love her for that it's Way Up check everything out on my YouTube channel Way Up with Ye and of course you guys have the last word how you doing, Angel? Yeah, my name's Todd. I'm with up here, PA. A week ago, I go out to take my girlfriend out to eat, and a male waitress said my girlfriend looks bedazzling. And I said, what the f*** does that mean, bedazzling? Matter of fact, man, go, go get a different waitress. You ain't, you ain't serving shit. I had a situation one time where I went out to eat with a guy, and the waitress actually, she was flirting with him, and then even when she handed him the bill, she, like, 
touched his hand and because it was awful. He, he didn't speak up either, so I never I stopped dating him. Going way up, turn up, turn up with Angela Yee.